Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Chris, for the introduction. Um, okay, so today we will be discussing the prevention of cervical cancer in Malawi with uh, my colleague, Sybil. Okay, so this figure here shows the pathogenesis of cervical cancer, starting uh, from normal epithelial cells in blue through interepithelial lesions after an HPV infection uh, to invasive cervical cancer shown in, right, uh, in red. So we can use this figure to highlight two key opportunities for cervical cancer prevention, starting with HPV vaccination. So HPV infection is implicated in over 90% of uh, cervical cancer cases, particularly the two high-risk types, 16 and 18, which are related to 70% of cervical cancer cases. Secondly, we have uh, pre-cancer screening and treatment, ideally in the same visit for precancerous lesions among women of reproductive age. And lastly, I'll mention treatment, which has been discussed quite a bit in the previous presentations, which is obviously necessary at the stage of invasive cervical cancer and notably requires a much, level, a much higher level of care. So as has been mentioned as well, uh, cervical cancer is actually the fourth most common cancer among women worldwide. Uh, and it's also the fourth most common cancer death among women worldwide. But uh, these two maps show the clear, stark global disparities which exist uh, worldwide. So here we have the age-standardized incidence of cervical cancer among women uh, in blue, and also the age-standardized mortality among women in red. And so you can see clearly the burden is uh, concentrated in low- and middle-income countries. So the routine implementation of cervical cancer screening and also the introduction of HPV vaccination has really decreased the burden of cervical cancer incidence and mortality in high income settings, leaving now um, about 90% of global cervical cancer deaths which now occur in low and middle income countries. So we'll zoom in to Malawi, which actually now ranks as second worldwide with the highest cervical cancer incidence and also second worldwide for cervical cancer related mortality. So given this high burden, the Ministry of Health has a comprehensive national cervical, cervical cancer control strategy, which has been in place since 2004. And MSF um, OCP engaged in 2018 uh, to support this program in the southern region of the country, uh, serving the urban Blantyre City and the rural Chiradzulu district. So today we'll present the results of two coverage surveys of these two preventive interventions, starting with the uh, vaccination coverage survey, which took place in Malawi, of 20, uh, sorry, in Malawi in 2020. So, uh, as mentioned, the, the Ministry of Health has a cervical cancer control strategy, and after a uh, pilot program in two districts, they rolled out a national vaccination campaign for girls starting in January of 2019. Um, and so MSF actually supported the second round of this vaccination campaign in Chiridzulu district in January of 2020. So it was a mixed school-based delivery and outreach strategy, and the target population were, was a single-year cohort of nine-year-old girls. So the survey uh, was to estimate coverage of HPV vaccination among nine and 10-year-old girls in Blantyre City and Chiridzulu district after the second campaign took place in January of 2020. And um, it was a cross-sectional survey using two-stage cluster sampling with a target sample size of 1,060 girls. So data collection took place in November and December of 2020, and a total of 5,039 households were visited and 1,024 age-eligible girls were included in this survey. Uh, school attendance was almost universal among this population, reported by 99.5% of girls. But HPV vaccination card presence was rather low at, at home. Only 16.7% were able to show one of our interviewers their card. So in terms of vaccination coverage results, um, dose one coverage among uh, all girls nine and 10 years old, according to verbal report or card in both of the districts combined, was 63%. And dose two coverage, so that's actually the complete coverage for the complete schedule at this point, among 10-year-olds only in both districts was 29%. And so this figure here shows the coverage results stratified by district, dose, and age, which we'll see a little more closely in the figure in the next slide. 
So nine-year-old girls were only eligible for one dose by January 2020. And according to verbal reporter Card, at 55% of those girls interviewed said they had this dose in Blantyre and about 65% in Jared Zulu. If we look at 10-year-old girls, they were able to have had two doses by the time of the survey, and only around 30% reported having these two doses, so that's complete schedule for HPV vaccination. However, around 70% in both districts had received at least one dose of the vaccine. So um, the introduction of HPV vaccination in general has been a challenge for governments worldwide, also as we see in Malawi. And this is in part due to the uh, specific single-year cohort of eligible girls, which are hard to locate, um, and they're older than usual for routine vaccination, obviously. And secondly, the implementation of vaccination at school, while it's great because girls are at school, it's also novel and it comes with its own logistical challenges. And, and lastly, there's sort of a conceptual challenge in uh, that the vaccine prevents a potential illness in the future and linkage between this vaccine against a virus that's sexually transmitted and the later development of cervical cancer is not always well known in the population. So in order to explore reasons for non-vaccination, we also asked um, eligible non-vaccinated girls why they were not vaccinated. Um, and the majority gave a practical reason, like they were actually absent or they were ill on the day of the school vaccination campaign. Uh, so then we could think about providing more opportunities for vaccination at school. So more than one vaccination day per cohort and also reminding girls of that day a bit in advance to make sure that they don't absent themselves. Um, about 18% actually said there was some misunderstanding about age eligibility requirements or they weren't able to be vaccinated because of this age el eligibility misunderstanding. Um, and here we suggest maybe using school level instead of date of birth for eligibility. Um, in Malawi, the campaign was restricted to a very short um, date of birth range, obviously one year of eligibility. And in a context where documentation is not always available, it, um, it would help increase the number of people vaccinated to use instead school level like grade seven or standard four. And in fact, there's been a trial of different methods that was conducted in Tanzania that showed this increased um, eligibility and coverage, excuse me. So then we have 13% of girls who said they actually weren't aware of the campaign. And then a further 18% who said they thought vaccines weren't good or just didn't want to get vaccinated at all, which could be construed as a possible vaccine hesitancy. Mm, so for this, we suggest, as has been mentioned in the first presentation, that sensitization um, initially about the campaign itself, but then also engagement with the community and teachers and health promotion um, to, to, to share information about the vaccine and cervical cancer would help to increase uptake. So in conclusion for this section, uh, the survey found after two, two rounds of vaccination quite moderate coverage for the second year of this implementation, which is perhaps disappointing, but is not completely out of line with the, uh, the global results for HPV uh, vaccination. In order, in order to um, improve coverage, we suggest to have multiple vaccination days and enhance um, communication and health promotion. And lastly, we also just mentioned monitoring the emerging evidence for efficacy of a single dose regimen, the HPV vaccine, as this has the potential to provide lasting immune response and uh, obviously reduce logistical barriers. So now I'll hand over to um, Sybil, who will continue with pre-cancer screening. Yeah, thank you, Robin, for the interesting results. And I want to talk about the cervical precancer screening coverage study, which was carried out in Blantyre City and in Triasulu District in Malawi in 2019. So the survey objectives were to estimate cervical cancer screening coverage and to understand why women were or were not screened. So the results should help to improve cervical cancer screening uptake. For this, we carried out a cross-sectional population-based survey in 2019 
and enrolled all consenting eligible women aged between 25 and 49 years. To do, for the determination of the cervical precancer screening status, we, um, we, we uh, uh, either asked the women themselves, so we did it by interview, and we also checked on their health passport. The survey area was divided in three strata. The first strata was urban. So in Blantyre City, we interviewed 343 women, and we did this with the use of a spatial sampling of households. The second and third strata was a rural strata, and we carried the study out in Chia Sulu district. So here, we divided Chia Sulu district in two additional strata. One strata, and we included all villages with geographical proximity to a MSF-supported cervical cancer screening service in a health center. And in the last strata, we included all villages without geographical proximity to a health center offering screening possibilities. So in these health centers, MSF did not support cervical cancer screening. The cervical cancer screening coverage was 40.2% in Blanchire City. It was 38.9% in the strata of Shia Sulu district with access to MSF supported cervical cancer services. And it was 25.4% in Shia Sulu district without access to MSF supported cervical cancer screening services. Interviewers also asked the women why they did go for cervical cancer screening. And so, almost 50% told us they had the cervical cancer screening done because it was recommended in the health facility. So women went to uh, health facilities for various reasons other than going for screening. There, they were informed about the possibility for screening and they took up the procedure. When asking why women did not go for screening, 26 told us it was a lack of time for screening, and another 18% told us it was a lack of motivation to go for screening. We ask as well for knowledge and awareness of cervical cancer screening, and we have a so-called cascade of knowledge. Almost 100% have a knowledge of the women interviewed had a knowledge of cervical cancer. Around 75% still have knowledge of possibilities of screening for cervical cancer. Still, close to 70% um, know that it's possible to prevent cervical cancer. However, only 55% are aware of being at their own individual risk to get sick of cervical cancer. On a positive note, Almost 100% of screened women would recommend cervical cancer screening to others. So to summarize, less than 50% of eligible women had cervical cancer screening done, both in Blantyre City and Chia Sulu District. And this is much lower than the targeted cervical cancer screening rate of 80% for Malawi. And despite the high knowledge for cervical cancer, there was a low awareness of being at risk to get this disease. And this might explain the low motivation for cervical cancer screening. Nevertheless, those who took up the procedure showed a high satisfaction with cervical cancer screening services. So to improve cervical cancer screening uptake, a two-pronged strategy is needed. We have to overcome supply-side barriers we have to improve physical access to cervical screening. So meaning we have to enhance the integration in the primary healthcare system, but we have also think a bit out of the box. We have to think of additional screening locations, um, doing it with mobile screenings in front of supermarkets at other times, maybe at weekends. And we definitely have to uh, distinguish between rural and urban settings in our activities as for example, already the communication devices are different in the rural and urban setting. And we have as well to overcome demand-side barriers. We have to invest in engaging the target population. We have to provide them with adequate, correct and understandable information. 
and we really have to focus on the practical actions women can do to prevent cervical cancer. So in conclusion, there is, we made some progress, but there's still a long way to go as, there, as we are really far away from reaching adequate coverage. So to significantly reduce mortality due to cervical cancer, it really requires consistent and continuous effort and investment. We need to double down on preventive measures. We need to fine tune, adjust and adapt and foremost to keep going. And with this, I want to finish, but not before thanking all the colleagues and all the partners who collaborated in our research. Thank you. <laughs>